This is going to be a comparison between System Shock 2 and the first Bioshock. Those are the two only games in the series, franchise, loosely connected, that I've played so far. I will be spoiling both games. And maybe I should also say as a disclaimer before I begin, I do love System Shock 2, and Bioshock did just not engage me as much. And it really wasn't that I was going in with a negative attitude. I really, really wanted to like it. And I do like a lot of things about it. And early on, it really, you know, I really thought I was going to love it. You know, the first, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes, maybe the first couple of hours of playing, I really dug it, you know, getting into Rapture and, you know, having my DNA reorganized for the first time, you know, to get the electro, electric shock power, and, you know, coming face to face with a little sister and a big daddy that first time where you don't fight them, where it's just, you know, she says, oh wait, this one's still alive, you know. So let's start with some small stuff. The hacking. I like the system in Bioshock, but I do... I think it's a little unfortunate that it pauses the game. It seems to pause the game. I was never attacked during hacking, although I did sometimes come out of hacking with... You know, say there are two turrets in one room, and I zap both of them, and then I hack one of them to be on my side. The other one might have woken up by the time I'm done hacking, but it hasn't attacked by then. It's incredibly intense when you have to connect these points. The thing might blow up if you do it wrong. You have to connect these points in the exact right way, knowing that you could be attacked while you're standing there. I'm sorry, that is just freaking intense, and that was how it was in System Shock 2. Yes, maybe it takes longer to hack in Bioshock. It, I have to say, it almost certainly takes longer. But they didn't have to make it take longer. They could have made it incredibly intense and have to take just a few seconds and not pause the game. In general, I just think the game pauses too easily. You know, there's a menu for choosing weapons that also pauses the game. I'm pretty sure. I never really used it, but it seems to pause the game. The map pauses the game. Again, I know, it's, it's more, you know, common today to have these more helpful things. I just, I like it when a game has you know, the guts to throw you to the wolves. You know, once you're in System Shock 2, you are at risk constantly. Enemies can spawn anytime, anywhere. Basically. Yeah, you can turn it off if you want to use that code. And the game almost never pauses. It only pauses when you go to the menu, you know, and either, you know, fiddle with the options, or save, or load, or whatever. That's the only time that the game isn't active, and, you know, when loading any area, obviously. Other than that, you know, if you want to look at the map, the full map, okay, but there could come an enemy behind you, or even in front of you, because you're looking at the map, you know. And maybe that's a good point to transition into talking about the maps briefly. Yes, you can see what direction you're pointing in, in the Bioshock map. And yes, it basically shows you where you can go and where you can't. But, it really... You really badly need... The, the game badly needs a compass or a mini-map. I get why they didn't have a mini-map. In fact, I'm not sure where you pick up the map in Bioshock. Maybe it happened. You know, maybe there was a bit in a radio transmission or something that I missed where he said what you just found was the map of entire of all of Rapture or something. Whatever. But in System Shock 2 it's because you have these cyber enhancements. You've been modified, you know, you wake up and you're not entirely human anymore. 
part of your brain is now a computer. That's freaking awesome. That's so... What's the word? Cyber... That genre. You know, like a William Gibson novel. And that is so creepy. You know, waking up and not being entirely human. And that is one of the first things that happens to you in the game. You go through the training areas, then you wake up and you're no longer entirely human. It's not like it happens halfway through the game, you know. You just... yeah. Which I guess there is a reasonable enough mirror of in Bioshock with you having your DNA reconfigured. It's one of the first things. And you can't not do that because otherwise you won't get through that door that needs shocking, you know. Anyway, that enables you, you know, that means that you have all the maps of the, yeah, or, well, you don't, maybe, you maybe don't have the maps, but you have the potential to draw the maps. You know, that's also something that I really thought was better in System Shock. Yeah. Okay, just real briefly, the minimap. It is so incredibly helpful, and it makes sense because you have the cyber, you know, upgrades things, you know, your brain is basically, the way I see it, it's basically, it is part of your, maybe it is part of your vision, or it just is like a visualization of, you know, how if you're walking through an area that you know by heart, you know, you've, it's, yeah, whatever, your house or your city, something. And you just know, oh, if I make a turn here, I'll get to there, you know. Anyway, the minimap, extremely helpful. And Bioshock, you're just constantly getting lost because you constantly have to check the map to find out where you're going. Except for when, you know, it does have the objective pointer thing. And that works okay. But that really doesn't help for exploring areas. For example, the game also really doesn't... It's constantly complaining if you explore, at least, especially later on. They were just constantly saying, oh, just move on. Uh, yeah, I kind of I need some ammo. I want to see if there are more cool upgrades in this area. The game is built for exploring. Both games are so much about the exploring. Anyway, yes, you, you draw the map in System Shock 2, and that just... You're really exploring. You're really finding finding out the structure of these areas. You know, in Bioshock, at, at first I wasn't even sure how I could tell if I'd been in an area or not. And yes, some people are going to say, oh, it doesn't matter if you go to all areas, but then why make it like that? It is, there aren't enemies in all areas, there aren't objectives in all areas. If you don't play, you know, if you don't want to, you don't have to explore all the areas, but it seems like the game is pushing you towards just completing the game instead. I, I, I do, do not understand that in games. Are, are they really worried that people will just forget that there are you know, goals in the game if they spend too much time exploring or just having fun with it, you know, without necessarily progressing through the linear storyline? And to move on to something bigger, the overall, I guess, concept, you could say. Let's start with enemies. I never care that much about the splicers. They just did not really do anything for me. I get the implication. I get that if you get everything you want, if you just shamelessly pursue every whim that will lead to bad things and if you genuinely get pretty much everything you want then yeah you know and and they keep changing their DNA eventually it's going to have really bad consequence and it seems to have driven them insane everyone in Rapture is insane except maybe Tenenbaum who might be like recovering from insanity Yes, I think it's just, it's, it's dull. It's not interesting to just have everyone you encounter. They've gone insane, okay. Just, it's a little variety, you know. 
have some that... I, I read that at one point they had like enemies that had evolved beyond the need for physical you know bodies they were they were brains in jars that sounds really cool just in general I mean the big daddies were really cool and you know for obvious reasons everyone loves them you know they were iconic I think before the game came out but other than that we just have the big daddies and the slicers and they just carry essentially the same weapons as you do. <laughs> okay, le le let's just see. System Shock 2. You have the you have the hybrids, and there are like three classes of those. You have the rumblers, you know, those huge... You know, they look like those pink enemies from the old Doom games. You have the arachnids. I don't know if you want to count the little... You know, the worms and the bees. Yes. The, because they're so easy to fight, so let's not count those. But anyway, we have the cyborg midwives. We have the cyborg assassins. We have robots. Several types of those. And... That might be more or less... Oh, we have the monkeys. I'm sorry, that's, that's seven enemies, off the top of my head. I'm not entirely sure that I've covered every one, but that's seven different types of enemies. <sighs> d d do you see the difference? And I would actually say System Shock 2 is probably the shorter game, but I'm, I'm not certain. Maybe if I ran through Bioshock and just didn't care about exploring, I could complete that pretty quickly. But that's not how I play System Shock 2. I don't run through it. I do explore and find all the things so yeah I just also it really seems like in System Shock 2 you can genuinely affect the outcome every choice has consequence when you choose something you're you're choosing that over something else I did not feel like it was that way in Bioshock I felt like it didn't matter what I chose I never got to spend all the atom and I doubt that if I had, there would have been anything left. There wasn't anything left that I was really thinking, oh, I gotta get that, I gotta upgrade to that. I wasn't really caring that much. And with, with System Shock 2, you do make sure to spend every cyber module that you can. It really makes such a huge difference for how... <laughs> how easy of a time you'll have with the rest of the game based on what you choose because you don't just choose you know you can't just pick up excuse me an assault rifle and use it you have to have like six in standard weaponry and that's the only weapon if I, as far as I recall that requires six in standard weaponry so if you want to upgrade to that yeah okay but that means some other stuff that you can't but then again if you don't the pistol, I think it, if you upgrade it all the way, it holds 24 bullets. If you upgrade the assault rifle all the way, it holds 72. It matters if you have to reload in the middle of a situation. Let's say you're fighting, you know, the many's heart. It matters if you have to reload your gun in the middle of the whole thing. You know, and... And the guns break and you have to repair them. You have to make sure to maintain them so they don't suddenly jam on you in the middle of a fight. Because once that happens, you can't just maintain them. You have to repair them. You have to you know, take it apart and put it back together. You know, and it's all done in this hacking interface. It just... It really makes you feel like you're there and like everything you do matters. And all of it costs nanites. Uh, just you constantly do have to make sure that you are you know not spending more nanites than you absolutely have to because you just you need them heck the final boss of the game has you know you need to hack at least three consoles I don't remember what they cost in nanites but if you're if you have no nanites anymore by then then yeah you know and just, 
yeah, in general, the, the choices really matter. Yes, it's unfortunate that going all Psy does not really give you much of a chance to complete the game. At least, it makes it very difficult. I've never actually tried, but I... I... I tried to try, but then after a while it was just like, okay, do I have to keep using these energy balls? Could I just pick up a pistol? I pick up a pistol, and then through the rest of the game I get to use more and more guns. And I don't use the Psy abilities all that much more. That is a bit unfortunate. In Bioshock, it is more clearly set up that, yeah, you need both. It's just that simple. There's no... You can't completely eliminate enemies with the plasmids. And, at least not in all circumstances. I guess you can, you can send big daddies or you know, turrets, you can have them attacking the enemy. But, you know, what happens when there are no big daddies or cameras and such around, you know? One thing I definitely do gotta give Bioshock props for, the flying, you know, I don't know, you know, the things that shoot. Those are pretty cool. That was a good idea. And I like that it really follows you if you hack it. You know, it follows you until it dies. So, the... Yeah, so, the splashers did not do much for me. The hybrids? Man, that's just, that is so ridiculously creepy. You're a human being, and then suddenly a snake-like alien crawls up your back, attaches itself to your spine, and starts controlling you. That is just, that is so creepy. And you can tell some of them aren't entirely gone. They can like, they can still talk of their own volition and they're warning you. They're they're telling you, get away from me. I'm going to kill you. You know, it's like maybe it's my personal, but that's just that that is that is my greatest fear. That to to be utterly incapable of ceasing to hurt others, to attack others. <sighs> That is just, that that is just mind blowingly terrifying to me. The splicers they made choices, and I don't know. You know what would have been good if there had been people who didn't make that choice. If there had been like I don't know, maybe some of the bodies I find are like you know people who didn't splice or something, but. Do something with that. Not everyone's going to just mindlessly... Yes, the majority. Definitely the majority. We are... Yeah. We're not that smart of a species. As a whole. There are, you know, pockets of brilliance or smarts. But there should be just some people left over. Same with, you know, in System Shock 2, you actually do... You know, you don't meet them, but you find their audio logs. You find audio logs from people who weren't taken over, you know? You have, I think her name was Bronson. She actually mounts a vigilante force to go and hunt them down and try to, you know, to stop the invasion, the infection, you know? And then, you know, some other enemies, we have the cyborg midwives, you know, they used to be, they used to be women, you know, we, you know, they were like, the, what, the secretary staff or something, and just, just the 
voice. Just the voice. It's just so creepy. And, you know, the thing she says... Definitely, the little sisters also say extremely creepy things, and they might, that might come out even, you know, the, the creepy things said in the two games. Because the whole thing about, you know, angels, and time for Betty by Mr. Bubbles, and Mr. B, and the way she cries when you killed the big daddy, and just help us... That is really, really creepy, and that just really gets you. But yeah, the cyborg midwives, the voice and the things they say, and just that mechanical, electronic sound. That's me getting a text message. Or my cell phone, I don't get them directly. I don't have cyber implants. The... The sound, you know that what is chasing you, it just, in general, in the game, you always know, you always have the sense, what is chasing you is not quite human. It might look it, it might almost sound it, but it is not human. It is not a human being anymore. Period. That was just something that just really works in the game, as far as the enemy design. You know, there's always that sound that just lets you know, you know, the arachnids, so creepy sounding, you know, just, I don't even have arachnophobia. I know that they were probably playing off that, you know, like how it has a clown, Pennywise. It just, I think it, it was especially because those mofos really, really poison you bad. And you don't find that many antitoxin hypos, you know. I mean, anti-radiation, I think, you know, I've had like 20 or 30 at a time that I wasn't, u that I wasn't using. With the toxin, I don't know, maybe 10 at the most at one time, you know. And it takes, you know, like, there are like five stages of being poisoned and one bite from this arachnid is going to take you up to the fourth one. Even if you're playing on the easiest difficulty, and that just... Yeah, it... That's another thing. The enemies really feel like they can kill you, you know, if you don't react quickly enough. Just, yeah. And you don't just go straight at them, hitting them with your wrench. Way too much of the time, that worked for me in Bioshock. Way too much of the time. It was just, it was so easy. I didn't feel like I was being challenged. In System Shock 2, if the enemy is coming at you with some kind of, you know, melee weapon, and you want to save your bullets, and you definitely want to save your bullets, because System Shock 2 has a very, very finite amount of ammo, and even the one, even what there is, you have to find, you know. Bioshock, oh, just go, you know, just find something, or just go to the next ammo buying machine, you know. And you can just restore the amount of money you have because, you know, like half the splicers in the game, once they're dead, they have money you can pick up. Way too easy. And it takes away too much, way too much of the tension. Anyway, the, if you want to fight the ones that fight on at short range with a short range weapon, and often you do, you have to kind of hit them before they hit you, or let them hit with, you know, the pipe, or, it, it's usually a pipe, the hybrids at least, then, you know, dodge that and then hit them before they have an, a chance to hit you again, you know, and you just, you can hear, that is someone dying, you know, the death scream of many of the enemies, you know, the hybrid, the cyborg, oh god, the cyborg midwife, that just horrifying scream, haunting you in your nightmares for decades after you play the game. And just, and, and when an enemy is fast, you can feel that enemy is fast. You know, the rumble, man, that is terrifying. You know, the first time you meet it in the, the basketball court, 
I don't even, is the light even on when you first meet it? Just huge, comes running at you, is massively powerful, you know, almost like tackles you. D really, really terrifying. And yes, I will say, you know, when the big daddies actually manage to throw you to the ground, that is also pretty cool. Although, again, again I will say, the big daddies were just a bit too easy to fight. I didn't feel challenged enough. It's also just horrible how in Bioshock you can literally have something explode in your face and you'll be fine. I'm sorry, when that happens in System Shock 2, you know you're dead. That's just, yeah. You know, that's why you run away from, oh, that's the eighth enemy. Those pesky, helpful robots. You know, just, again, so creepy because they think you're helping. They think they're helping you. They're like, you know, if, if they can't find you, they're like, sir, wherever did you go? You know, it's like, it's not entirely unlike C-3PO, just, you know, absolutely no attitude. The, the, you know, an excellent choice, if I do say so myself. All, all these really creepy because just, again, it's that thing of they don't even think they're doing... It's, it's good intentions when they lead to bad things are just extremely creepy. They blow up on contact... So you constantly, you have to run away from them and be shooting at them, and they're not even like, hey, what are you doing? You know, because that would at least, that would be a reaction. No, they're just these walking tin men that just think that, you know, they just, they think that they have to walk all the way up to you, get some input from you, and then help you. But no, they blow up on impact, and you can't, you know... Shooting something that's coming at you looking really threatening and being, like, cruel and taunting and stuff, that is just, you know, that's common first-person shooter fare. Shooting something that's coming at you that is being, like, amiable and all, you know, wanting to help, just, that is really creepy, you know. And... Yes, let's move on to the overall, the, the enemies, the, the brains behind the whole thing. Bioshock, I just, I don't even really know why I should care if it's Andrew Ryan or Frank Fontaine running the, running Rapture, you know. Another quick thing, the splicers just didn't, it didn't matter who they were sent by, they acted the exact same way whether they were sent by Frank Fontaine, Andrew Ryan, Sanders, or that guy early on, I'm pretty sure he sends some at you, you know, the, the guy with the mask, and he's like saying, oh, if I smell any Fontaine on you, you know, which I guess is, you know, a hint that it is Fontaine guiding you. It didn't matter at all. There wasn't any kind of... It, you know, for all I know, some of them just think I'm invading their territory, and I kind of am. You know, why, why am I not just, just, I don't know, tranquilizing the splicers? You know, what, why exactly do they deserve to die? That just... The hybrids, why do I not tranquilize them? Because they have more adrenaline pumping through their body. It would take a massive amount of tranquilizers, and it doesn't really matter because if I don't if I don't kill them, they will keep coming. They'll just they will mutate into something even more dangerous if I don't you know, any hybrid that you don't kill is potentially going to be a rumbler. Do you really want to face a rumbler instead of just killing hybrids early on? Hell, maybe it's a relief. If I was in that kind of situation, I think I'd want the bullet. Thank you. If I was utterly incapable of preventing myself from hurting and harming others, yeah, I don't think I'd want to live with that. The splicers, I don't know, 
couldn't... I mean, that, that's that whole d discussion, of course. Can we cure insanity? And should we... You know, is it... What's more merciful to try to cure them and try to help them have a good life? Or, you know, in some cases, is it called for to, you know, put them down in a merciful way? And just, the game didn't address that. It was just, oh, you have to kill them, you know. Why can't I just, you know, some of them were, like, frozen and, you know, I smashed the frozen thing and then they came out of there and it was just like, well, if I had just left them frozen, wouldn't it have just been fine? You know, it's just... I mean, I don't know if they could have their DNA altered all the way back, but... I don't know. But yeah, with all the enemies in System Shock 2, they are being guided by something that does not want you to succeed, and, you know, there's no real, yeah, to move on to the details of, because that would be an easier way to address this, the many. Biology run rampant, biology with no counter there's nothing to balance the existence of the many. They are, you know, in, in nature, it's all about balance. It's the reason that one species does not, you know, have way too many of them, way too many of them for there even to continue to be food, is because there's some other species keeping them in check, or there's some attribute to that environment, keeping them in check. The availability of food, for example. The many were created by Shodan. They don't have a counter. There is nothing that has evolved yet that can stop them. And the, the aggressiveness of their infection makes it unlikely that something will, because they don't wait around for something else to... They weren't built to seek balance. Shodan believes that she and her creations are the be-all, end-all. She doesn't think that there's going to be something after. She doesn't think that there needs to be balance. She thinks that she is above. And that is the whole, that is the whole point. There, there are people who think that way also. You know, and look at what they do. You know, they pursue eugenics, they, you know, try to only get, you know, positives for their specific group, you know. It is an inherent quality to the way we think that we actually need to work to restrain, otherwise we're doomed. The many is like a virus like a like a violent entity of biology that just seeks to reproduce and reproduce at the expense of other biological life forms you know and that is something you can relate to and that is something where you can, you can't reason with it you can't just like you know and it's got that kind of the utter lack of individuality quality to it, and that is really, really creepy. You know, it's like what people used to fear, and some of the southern American states still fear, about communism. You know, this whole thing about that... You know, I'm not saying we shouldn't fear communism. I'm saying that the very idea of any kind of socialist trait to something in our society should not be considered a bad thing. It's only once it's an actual... an actual... 
totalitarian state, you know. And briefly about Bioshock, maybe it is a totalitarian, there are, there are obviously traits of totalitarian society, you know, you have the propaganda machine, you know, the wiser man telling the silly, silly woman, Mary, that, oh, there you go, listening to the other side again. What are we going to do with you? No, listen, Mary, this is how it really is. You know, there are obviously traits. And, you know, you can, I, I would say it's fair to infer from some of the logs that it's still a class-based society. And that was, you know, something that they were trying to, you know, that's, that's something that I think we all need to accept. Where there is society, there are classes. There's nothing, to, you know, I would personally say that the big goal is to make sure that the class that has it the worst does not really have it that bad at all. You know, then I think we have a pretty good society. Although, obviously, it, you know, growth and change is always going to happen. As long that where there is life, there is change. Anyway, you know, still class society, and it was a bit of a totalitarian state, but I just didn't hear this mighty uproar. There was, there was one guy. There was just Frank Fontaine. He was the only one who wanted Andrew Ryan gone, that I really heard. You know, the, the, well, I don't know, Tenenbaum, maybe also, you know, some. But it wasn't like there was this big movement, this big... I don't know, maybe there was, maybe that's part of the backstory, I, I never got that much into it, and it just, so it didn't all register, it didn't all stick with me. And even, and, and if there was, it was just, you know, it was that Frank Fontaine also wanted power, so, just, I don't know, it just, everyone in the entire game is just, evil in some way, you know. I'm not saying that it's not psychologically accurate that, you know, some freedom fighters do want power for themselves. Yes, that is absolutely true. And when there isn't... I don't know if there was a democracy, because it's not really... there isn't a mention of one, really. It's basically just everyone just gets to do what they want to do, except, you know, vandalize, because then you get the turret fire. The... But yeah, so... Yes, Andrew Ryan probably was a dictator, you know, but... And yes, that is realistic, because if there isn't... You know, if, if one man has all the power, sooner or later he's going to be a dictator. There's, there's that line in The Dark Knight, you die a hero or you live long enough to see yourself the bad guy. I think Nolan absolutely nailed it with that one. Anyway, the... you know, with... Uh, with the many, it really does... You know, it's all, and, and it's so decentralized, you know, the only thing that there is to the many that is at all cent that, that isn't decentralized is that heart, you know, the one thing that keeps it all alive, you know, you do not see any instances of the many after you kill the heart and jump through. You know, also, just that. You have no idea where you're going to end up. Just, yeah, you just have to make the jump, you know, and that's just a couple of minutes after, well, depending on how long you take to take out the heart. Even, especially those stars that seem to absorb the impact of your bullets, you know, so you have to take out the stars first. At that point, you need a gun. You know, you're not going to have to get by with scientists. Anyway, you've just taken a leap, you know, into the water, and then you have to take another jump into the... And, you know, then there's also when you launch yourself into the body of the many. That is cool. From the... The Rickenbacker, you know, you use one of the escape pods to launch yourself into something, into this massive body, because Shodan tells you it's grown that far, it's, 
it's actually beginning to cover the ship. The Von Braun, this massive thing, housing, I don't know, thousands of people, you know, tons of equipment, taking many hours to walk through the entire, you know, structure of it. And the Mini is literally starting to cover it. You know, and maybe eventually they'll... Well, yeah, they've already, they've taken over Xerxes. If you don't get Shodan to... You know, if you don't get Shodan control of the... What you do at one point, you get her to... You know, you transfer her and you get her... You, you give her control over the Von Braun. If you hadn't done that... <sighs> Who's to say where the many would have had Xerxes bring the Von Braun, you know, back to Earth? What, what are we going to do? What are we going to do to stop that? You know, just, uh, you know, once the worms hit the, you know, I mean, they managed to take over this space dish. It, it, it's like, it's like alien, you know, it's that kind of thing of... Look at what it did to this, you know. Imagine if it was introduced to an even larger environment. I'm not saying we should see that, because AVP2 is utter crap. But just imagine, imagine if it wasn't such a close environment. They managed to, I mean, there, there were security staff. There was a movement to ensure that such a thing didn't happen, you know. And then it started taking over, you know, one by one. And if it got to Earth, if the Von Braun got back to Earth, and, you know, the first couple of people, you know, I mean, it takes time. It takes time for the mutation to take place. You know, it doesn't just go with the... You know, they don't change into the hybrids immediately, because obviously the hybrids are going to scare some people off. Unless, who knows, maybe the many, I mean, the many made them very aggressive, maybe they could soothe them, and, you know, it would just seem like a disease. And you're going to have to quarantine these people, you're going to have to see if you can't heal them. There are, I don't know, maybe a couple hundred of them. So, yeah, you know, and then, you know, if they manage to, and, and heck, they're probably going to bring some of the eggs along with them, you know, it's got that whole, ooh, something new, this was the whole point of the Von Braun, we wanted to explore a new world, it's come back, we didn't ask it to come back, but it's come back, Let, let's see what's in these eggs, and then, yeah. Hell breaks loose. So anyway, the, the, I suppose that's about it for the many. Shodan. Technology. Run amok. You know, the... The uninhibited machinations of a self-aware entity. You know, it... It's not a new concept with the whole, you know, the robot, the, the AI becomes completely, you know, it realizes, it becomes self-aware, and then it thinks it should rule us all. That's not new, but there are... I'm not sure I can really think of any other games with the first one I hear would love to play it um, that actually have that as one of the enemies you know that actually I don't know maybe halfway through the game or so you realize that you haven't been following a human being you've been following a machine posing as one and you know that Shodan is not to be trusted but what choice do you have? You're up against the many. You're up against biology unrestrained. You need an ally that is, you know, of the same size. It's an uneasy alliance. 
and you don't even know exactly what she can do. You know, you just you just have to trust that she's going to lead you in the right direction. And then near the end, you find out, yeah, she kind of was until she didn't need you anymore. Then you're just hung out to dry. You know, you land at the bottom of that long, watery drop, and then there you are, you know, and Shodan's like, oh, you're still here. Don't get used to it. And then she starts sending these invisible assassins after you. You know, it just... It's really, really creepy. And, you know, again, we have that, like I mentioned in my review of System Shock 2, the conflict between biology and technology. Because you yourself have to, you know, you're already a mix of biology and technology, and cyberpunk, that's that genre, if you remember, yeah. Um, the, you know, and that, that's that idea that, you know, the next step is for us to be meshed with machines. I'd say it is coming. It is coming once we... I mean, we depend more and more on our machines. Every single day, you know. There are people who, you know, who can just barely leave the house without their cell phone or their MP3 player or, you know, other things. Sooner or later, those will be integrated. You know, there are those that would say we partially already live from machines. I mean, pacemakers. That's, you know, a machine that is integrated into your body, sort of, that's, you know, and it must make us ponder. We have to stop and think about, okay, is this really, you know, is it necessary and is it healthy? Should we be pursuing this technology so completely, you know, and, and it has that... Shodan is like a brilliant mind. I mean, she has gone insane, yes, but she is brilliant. You know, the line between brilliance and insanity is very thin, I'd say. The, you know, she can figure out anything. She can, she's smarter and faster of a brain than you, you know, and, and that's really, you have these two ultimate manifestations, you know, the, the, the manifestations of these two ultimate directions, you know, you have the ultimate biology, which is this adaptive, massive, self-reliant, and utterly unindividual, decentralized being, you know, it's, the, the many is almost like nature itself, you know, versus the pure technology, the, the cold calculating, the ultimate individuality in a way, because she doesn't think that anyone else is as important as her, you know. And so when you land at the drop after having killed the heart of the many, now you're faced with another, you know, through a few audio logs, you realize, you know, there, there are those really memorable lines. God, Shodan shouldn't be allowed to play God. She's far too good at it. And Shodan, you realize, Shodan, she might also be headed towards Earth. And when you... You know, and, and she's going to take over. The moment she gets into contact with the, the internet, the, the, you know, just the, the overall network of machines and computers, we're doomed. What, what, are, what are we going to do against that? She controls all electrical... You know, I mean, aboard the Vaughn Braun, you were being fought, you know, one of the things you fought was all the electrical, you know, every robot, 
every security robot, every, oh, every maintenance robot, I think that's what they're called, you know, the blowy up -y ones, every camera, every turret, all of them, 100% against you. You know, that was because Xerxes was in charge of them, and the many was influencing Xerxes. Imagine a planet of that. You know, that is what Shodan would do if she reached Earth and she was given enough time. And well, what's going to stop her? She's, she's in a machine, you know. It's not like you can just, I don't know, cut some wires or, you know, there's no physical body to destroy, you know. It's only at the very end that you actually get a chance to destroy her. It's very fortunate that she doesn't do that much to stop you. You know, she only has she has that cyborg assassin thing with her head on it, and then she has those three you know ports that you have to hack to get her get her shield down so you can attack the physical manifestation of her. You know, it's not really her physical form, but but that does make sense because she ha she hasn't had that much time to build, and she might not have even focused that much on that because she didn't think that you were actually going to. You're an insect to her, you know. You're nothing, nothing. She doesn't even think that you know. All along the game, she is like being so overbearing and calling you an insect and saying you're nothing to her. It's just, you're her slave. She needs you to carry out some stuff, and afterwards she's going to dump you. Cold, not heartedly, cold, you know, cold interfacedly. And, and that's it. So, obviously she doesn't put up that much defense, and she also hasn't had that much time, which is why, you know, you have these not quite finished. That's also just such a creepy and cool idea to have these unfinished kind of you know structure. You know it 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 really does look like you know when you're building something in a computer and you have a sort of visual. You know obviously it isn't. You know, when you build something in a computer, it's a lot of code. You know. But the visual representation of that, yeah, it does kind of look... I mean, if you, like, if you've tried building levels in, what's it called, um, the map making software for Max Payne 1, for example, you know, it has that kind of, you know, some, a few primary colors and a lot of black blocks, you know. Now, about Bioshock, the... I did like the ending, with the whole, you know, you need family, you need love, you need to connect with other people more than you need to just have all your personal wishes fulfilled. That is exactly right. It was slightly preachy, but it was correct, you know. Pyramid Head tells me that the other endings are like you go insane and you take an army of splicers, you know, up to the surface, away from Rapture. I don't know, that's okay, I guess. I don't completely see what would motivate. I don't know. And the you know, a lot of splicers, so it would take time, at least, before they were all stopped. I just can't see it as being as terrifying as Shodan, who wouldn't need very much time near a network of computers to take over the world. Of course! They had to do it, and the many who are self-replicating. As long as there is life near them, they are going to keep coming. They're just going to take over that life and use it as slave labor. 
I don't know, a couple of hundred, maybe a couple of thousand splicers. It'd take time, sure. It would take some time and some effort to take them all out, but... I just don't completely see it, honestly. I... How are they going to make more, for example? Okay, I guess they could take prisoners and, you know, use plasmids on those, but... That brings up the whole... How are they even being controlled? Who is... How do you tell insane people, this is what you have to do? How insane are they? Are they, are they seeing things? Are they, hearing, are they hearing voices? How do you control people like that? I just, I don't see it. What is keeping them from attacking each other? You know? No, I just, I don't see it. And yeah, how, how would they make more? Would they just keep plasmiding until those were insane too, and then they have another soldier there? And... In fact, would there even be, isn't, isn't it like a, a bit of a, Isn't there a finite amount of atom? And where is the Eve coming from anyway? Isn't the atom just being recycled? You know, isn't it like a... There's a word for it, but it just it's beyond me at the moment. Anyway, isn't it... Isn't the reason that there keeps being atom the fact that the little sisters or picking it up from the people who had at... I don't know. I don't know if that makes sense. I where is it coming from? Who's... you know... Is there a finite amount of it? Or are they producing it somehow? I don't know. Just... The... final thing with, you know, him having done a ton of Adam, you know, Frank Fontaine, you know, he talks about, oh, why, you know, I didn't do it for this long, but now I just go nuts with it, and it's kind of, you know, you do, you do have to wonder why did he wait that long to do it anyway if he was, it, it, it's hinted that he sampled other of his merchandise, you know, he was a smuggler, Wait, is the implication that smugglers are inherently evil? I mean, they're just, they're, they're supplying what the people want. It makes more sense if you legalize that kind of thing, then you don't have smugglers, because it doesn't make sense to smuggle something that's legal, unless it's considerably cheaper. Anyway, you know, it seemed like he had done drugs or something. Maybe just, yeah, that's, that's the idea I got. Feel free to correct me. So why didn't he do Adam before? Anyway, he does a lot of Adam, and you then have to run up to him and use the syringe to get it out of him, you know, after fighting him, and he... I don't know. I think he was supposed to have a lot of different abilities. I'm not sure I noticed that many, just, I don't know, three or four. But yeah, that is kind of cool, and I do like the image of him being repeatedly stabbed by little sisters, healed little sisters, with the with these it's syringes and just... I'd say it was poetic justice, but was Frank the one behind... Isn't it more like either... Dr. Tenenbaum or Dr. Su Chong. Dr. Su Chong did get what he deserved because he was, as we hear in an audio blog, killed by the little sisters, you know. Papa Su Chong, Papa Su Chong. That was pretty good. And finally, let me just say the audio logs in System Shock 2 are far more memorable and terrifying and good at delivering exposition without seeing forced, at least to me, than those of Bioshock, although some of the ones of Bioshock were pretty good. And the menu system, you know, in, in Bioshock, you can't even listen to 
Oh wait, yeah, you can. It's just, it's a badly done menu. In, you know, and again, it pauses if you want to listen to a radio transmission you heard before, or the, you know, or one of the logs, for example, or such. And again, in system structure, if you want to be safe doing that, find a safe place and, you know, don't spend too long doing it. That is tension. That is terrifying. That is effective. And that is nightmare inspiring. Bioshock just makes it too easy in too many ways. It takes too many of the choices away. The overall conflict just isn't as interesting. The themes explored are interesting, and they're explored pretty well, but there are so many more things that could be explored, very interestingly, that aren't. I, I can't say for sure, because I haven't played the second, and I hear there's a third coming out, or something like that. If one of them does actually explore the whole, you know, if it's... Maybe they're fanatical instead of insane. That would be interesting. If the Spicers were fanatical instead of insane, that does make pretty good sense. And if they're being controlled by propaganda, then you could have them yell propaganda lines at you, you know. I will not submit to your evil demands, you surface dweller, you know, something. That would be awesome. But just to have them insane and somehow these four different people can control each of their own group of splicers. No. Not by... How are they even getting more, you know... I mean, why don't they send more concentrated attacks towards you if there is indeed a finite amount? I mean, the Von Braun maybe does have a finite amount of, you know, overall biological... But, for one thing, it's like nature, and nature doesn't really... Nature kind of just up, keeps applying pressure more and more until it, you know, until something actually happens. With, now I'm making it sound like nature has a mind or a will, which it of course doesn't. But, you know, that is the, that is the nature of nature. You know, if something doesn't quite work the first time, it might apply more, you know, or also if, if you observe, observe animals, you know, they're going to keep trying until they make it work, or they're going to abandon it and seek, you know, for example, food elsewhere, you know. So, you know, the many isn't smart. It's, it's not that, you know, it's, it's just will. It's, it's unified will. And they maybe also don't think that highly of you like Shodan doesn't, you know. And they do have an entire ship full of security cameras, turrets, security robots. You know, and as you go further, you do also, they do try harder to, you know. I mean, suddenly they have these I don't know, 15 or 25 black eggs, you know that will spawn an even greater threat, you know, so they are responding to, it's just, it's, it's evolution, it's nature, it takes time, you know. Nature isn't, oh, there's something right here, right now, that is threatening me, pling, and, you know, that solves it. No, nature is, this works better than this, so we'll go with this, slowly, gradually, generation, over generations, you know. And, you know, it does, I mean, near the end, it's expanded to cover, to partially cover the Von Braun, you know. And I'll also just say, one thing I like about the Bioshock ending, to finish on the endings, Bioshock did not really eliminate the idea of a sequel, but it also isn't sequel baiting. That I like. I like when, because you can play Bioshock and 
never know that there's more than one game and you will feel satisfied. It's like the first Matrix movie, the original Star Wars movie, you know, A New Hope. If you never watch another one, yeah, that was a story, that was an entire story, it had a beginning, it had an ending. Yeah, you know, and yet, you know, in all three cases, they don't eliminate the, the option of a sequel. System Shock 2's ending, so creepy, so... I did like that one better than the Bioshock ending, and... Yeah, it's quite sequel baiting, but... I want System Shock 3, I, I badly want it, you know, if... If anyone ever releases... If, if anyone ever actually does do that, you know, maybe once they've done the, the whole Bioshock thing, if they could try to actually make a System Shock 3, because it's it's right there, you know. I mean, I don't know exactly where the where the limits of Shodan's new form are, but you know, she's clearly she's inside. I don't remember the name, but you know, she's in the mind of you know one of the two people, and they're in that you know, escape pod launched from the Von Braun itself. And I believe that's headed toward Earth, as far as I recall. So, before, or possibly before the lead goggles of System Shock 2 returns to Earth, Shodan is already going to be on Earth. Maybe it could, maybe a sequel could have Earth, futuristic Earth, gradually be taken over by the you know, by Shodan, you know, as she, maybe she has to personally visit the different, you know, machines, different networks, and you have to, you know, work to undo the damage she's doing, you know, to fight back her invasion, or, I, I, the surface of the Earth, it would be less interesting than outer space, obviously. That is also something. I do like how you can look out a window in Bioshock and you see, you know, you see C. But that is still, that is life and it is not a void. Look out a window in System Shock 2. You see space. Empty, empty, vacuous space. As far as the asterisk, there's no sign of life. There is no natural life anywhere near you. You know, everything near you, with a couple of exceptions. Basically, the only two exceptions are the two people who do get back, and one of them then gets overtaken by Shodan, so there's only the one, you know, natural life left. Even yourself is no longer entirely natural because you have the cyber stuff. Everything else is dead or mutated or altered, you know, with using robotics. But anyway, I don't know exactly where System Shock 3 would take place. Maybe, maybe it should be on Earth, but Earth should be very, very different from what we know as today. Maybe there should be some kind of, there should definitely be that I don't think a System Shock game should have a big populace. I think that would destroy it. I, same for a Bioshock game, obviously. We shouldn't have a lot of people who you can interact with or who you can, like, you know. I love that even you know, in System Shock 2, even when you're, like, training, you see other people, sure, but you never interact with any of them. You just, you get instructions by real people, but other than that, there's no contact with human beings, you know. The one time you meet the two people who, you know, get to the safe, you know, it's the, the pod there, you're watching them through this glass door that is slowly opening. You can't actually leave the room until they've, you know, until they've already left, so you can't come into direct contact with them. And yes, it is a little bit unfortunate.
unfortunate that they're seemingly running out of, you know, they're, it's a dead end that they came out of. I always go there and it's just, could there have been just like, I don't know, a locked door or something, that would have been. But no, they just, they come running out of the dead end and then are suddenly chased by a big monster. Yeah, it, it, that doesn't make sense. Anyway, if you've actually watched this video this far, you must be as crazy about System Shock 2 as I am. Or you must be a big, big fan of Bioshock and just continuing to listen. It's like the Shock DJ thing, just to hear what else I would say of awful, awful things about the game. Either way, thank you. Now please go outside, get some fresh air.